hello. Welcome back to the channel. This guy is getting a massage today. <laughs> I think he wants the coffee, honestly. Um, he is deaf. So a lot of horses that have an all white face like this, a lot of times um, they are deaf. Just however that gene works that controls the white face also controls their hearing. So he can't hear a thing. He just deaf, gone. You could fire a shotgun over him right now and he would be asleep like this. But super quiet horse. Some deaf horses can be a little more sensitive. Not him. He is just as bomb proof, obviously, as they get. So he has a really cool story. I'm going to be giving him a massage today because he had a bit of an accident earlier in the week. Um, uh, another horse kind of came up on him and Mirage didn't hear, uh, he didn't hear the horse and he didn't see the horse. And so it kind of spooked him and he jumped and lost his footing and he fell. So anytime a horse has a fall, um, a performance horse or a pasture horse, that's a lot of weight to be falling down. Even when people fall, you're sore the next day or the next couple of days. So always like to um, address that with massage. And that goes for barrel horses that take a slip or a wrong step or, you know, jumpers or any, I mean, any horse can fall for any reason. So it's good to cover them um, afterwards with a massage just to make sure everything is good, get any tension or knots that may be there out. So look at him begging. <laughs> Mm. Let's get started. So he's going to get a full body massage and then we're going to uh, just give him some love. <clears throat> he is an older guy. He's in his 20s, I believe, mid 20s. And the story with him is my mom worked for a barn years ago. And the barn got this horse in as we're thinking, you know, as like a two-year-old or something. Young, you know, like a two-year-old but under saddle uh, or maybe an early three-year-old possibly. <laughs> the fly spray system just kicked on. Uh, and, you know, mom really took to him. She, he came with another paint. And mom really was drawn to this one. And so she rode this one and, you know, did a lot of the training with him. She did some trick training with him. She taught him to lay down and all kinds of cool stuff. And the barn a couple years later, or maybe, I don't know how long it was, but uh, the barn sold him. And... You know, just ended up getting some different horses in. And a lot of barns do that. A lot of big barns, you know, the horses will come and go if the horse isn't uh, what they expected or if they just need something different. So it was kind of one of those situations. They were, however, supposed to be going to their forever home. And that did not happen. So... She was, you know, training the horse, riding it. He was great on trails and everything. And he got sold along with the other paint that he came with. And, you know, mom was really sad. You know, there's just sometimes those horses that come into your barn or the barn that you work at and you just really get attached to them. And then other horses, it's like they come and they go. That's the business, right? So she was really attached to him. <clears throat> He's just a just a good soul like he has a cool personality you can do anything in the world with him so she was upset she ended up um not working for that barn anymore and taking a different career path and it just so happened probably like 10 years later it could have been more years i don't know well it had to have been so maybe it was like 15 years or something she was just scrolling through Facebook and saw an advertisement for a auction, a horse auction barn that's semi-local to us. And it was a picture of 
this, you know, chestnut horse with a bald face. And mom's like, there's no way that's Mirage. That just, it can't be. Like, there's no way he's at an auction house. And, you know, it, there's, there's other horses with bald faces. It, there's no way it's him. Well, mom remembered he has, like, a little gray patch on his lip right here. His, he has a pink mouth, but this part's gray. So mom messaged the auction house, and she's like, hey, if you could get me a picture of the left side of his mouth, I'll be able to identify if this is the horse that I think it is. And sure enough, he had that. And mom's like, oh my gosh, that's Mirage. Like, I have got to get him. And granted, we don't rescue horses ever. Like, we didn't, we didn't have room for another horse. You know, if we buy horses, we typically buy them as weanlings or yearlings from our local breeder. But, you know, since mom knew this horse and she always felt a connection with him, she's like, oh, gosh, we've got to get him. So long story short, she got him. And he has just been so happy here. He doesn't really have a job. He just enjoys retirement and, you know, gets loved on and gets massages and has the life. So it's pretty cool how he came into her life. And, you know, kind of left and ended up finding his way back here. This is not the barn. This is our personal barn. But the barn that she worked at is about 10 minutes away from here. So it's just, it's wild how everything like that happens. So a lot of this I'm going to fast forward through. But I will say like right away, he has a lot of tension up here. Uh, and like the first third of his neck and you can kind of see him like dropping his head or if I hit a spot he might twist his neck and that's just one of those you know when you get a massage and it kind of hurts but it also feels good at the same time that's kind of what the horses are doing and you notice that he licked his lips earlier that's them um, a sign of relaxation when they lick and chew He's got his eyes closed, which he always has his eyes closed. But some horses will, you know, close their eyes and just really enjoy the process. So right here is a pretty good, pretty good knot. So we'll just kind of gently try to work that out. And by doing massage, you bring blood flow to the area. And that also brings oxygen to the area. And that can help repair as well. And I really like to massage on cross ties. I think the horses can relax a little bit better. And you're not having to like chase them around if they're straight tied and they want to swing their hip around. You're not having to chase them around. So we'll, we'll hyperlapse a little bit of this. And if I feel another spot that's worth talking about, we will come back. So we can chat a little bit about what kind of horses need massage and how often and all of that. Just to give everyone a little bit more information about what this is about. So, you know, there's all kinds of different therapy for horses. There's massage, there's chiropractic work, there's kinesiology, which is um, the tape that you see a lot of human athletes wear during, you know, football games, basketball games. So we apply that same tape and that same procedure to the horses. There's MagnaWave, there's PEMF, there's acupuncture, there's, you know, trigger point, there's myofascial release, there's all kinds of different modalities and therapies that we can put on our horses. I've seen the Beamer Blankets um, become very popular in our area. 
So everything is, you know, going to target different things and it's going to hit everything a little bit differently. So it's hard to tell exactly what your horse needs most of the time. You know, the best thing to do is I would always start with the least invasive and, you know, work your way up the ladder and just see, you know, start off with massage and just see if it's a muscular issue. And if, you know, that addresses some of it, but not all of it, then you can, you know, if it's like a shoulder or a back or, you know, like a hip, you can get the chiropractor out and see if it's something that's a bone alignment problem. Um, so it's trial and error to see what your horse responds to. I know some horses, they don't like the Beamer blankets. Some horses don't like the MagnaWave, you know, um, some horses don't like massage. That's just the, the way it is. So you need to figure out what your horse enjoys, what works best for them, and what's given you the best results. And it's really hard to tell after one session, especially if your horse has a problem. And that's typically when people will reach out. The horse had a fall or he's you know doing something differently and it's not how he used to move or he's stiff or... You know, there's some problem and that's what's causing the owner to reach out to get a massage. So at that point, it's a little too late. You know, we're behind the ball at that point. And we're doing damage control. So it's hard to see results after one massage session. That's a tongue twister. Massage session. You know, though a lot of times you'll see some improvement, but it won't be like it was before whatever the incident was. And it takes a couple sessions to, you know, get that horse back on track. Whereas if, and a lot of performance barns will do this, they'll just put their horses on a schedule. And typically we'll know, you know, does the horse need it every three weeks? Do they need it every four weeks, every five weeks? And because those horses get ridden every day or they get worked every day, there's something being done with those horses every day and someone's putting eyes on them. The uh, handlers or the owners or the trainers can see, you know, how quickly those horses are reverting. And we catch them with massage before they get back to having any kind of issue. And that's the best way. That's a preventative plan and the, you know it is costly at $75 I have not upped my rates in the seven years that I've been doing this and because me as an owner when I was getting my horses massaged I couldn't afford to get them massaged as often as I wanted it was like a once a year thing and that was you know like a <laughs> That was like Christmas money that I got and I would spend it on, you know, getting a massage or something. So I don't want anyone to not be able to afford a massage for their horse if they feel like they need it. And I want people to be able to afford to have this therapy included into their horse's regular routine. And depending on what the horse does is going to depend on how frequently you get massage. Like this one, for example, he doesn't have a job. His job is to just enjoy retirement. So we can give him a massage just to make him feel good and to pamper him and spoil him because obviously he's enjoying this. <laughs> you know, or if he is starting to get stiff or sore or he has an accident, we can give him a massage then. So it's kind of on an as-needed basis for a horse like this that's retired and maybe he just does a weekend small trail ride or something. And then you have, you know, a horse like Dallas who is, you know, getting rode five and six times a week and, <clears throat> you know, he might be getting sore, he's building muscle, so he might benefit from a massage once every couple weeks just to make sure that those muscles are going to be performing the way that they need to, that they're firing correctly, that there's nothing out of whack, there's no adhesions. 
<clears throat> and that way it just makes his job as a performance horse a little bit easier. And it makes him feel good too. So um, horses that are on some sort of a layup, as long as there's no contraindications with the reason that they're on a layup, massage is good for them because if they're on stall rest, you know, you're going to have a lot of muscle atrophy. You're going to have a lot of stiff muscles just from not being able to get out and move. They're going to have um, some decreased range in motion. So getting those horses out um, and getting a massage done on them is really beneficial. Again, everything that we do in massage, it increases blood flow. It gets rid of uh, lymphatic fluid that's hanging around. It brings oxygen to... Uh, the muscle fibers and the tissue, and it helps repair. And it just feels good. If you're, if you got a bum leg and you got a brace on it and you can't really get out and do stuff, you're going to get stiff and sore. And then your good leg is going to be compensating for the bad leg. So that muscle is going to get pretty tired and worn out and you might have some adhesions there. So it's going to feel good to have that one massaged. So any horse can benefit from massage. You can't go wrong. You can't really do damage as long, like I said, there's no um, contraindications. So if there's no problem with your horse, you're doing it as a preventative. You're doing it as just to make your horse feel good because they are athletes and they work very hard for us. And typically when a person gets a massage, it's a very enjoyable experience anyway. So it's nice to pass that along to our horses and make them feel good, make them feel comfortable. Now that being said, during massage, we break down a lot of muscle fibers. So a lot of times, just like with people massages, you'll kind of feel a little sick or sore the next day. And that's because your muscle fibers have been broken down by the masseuse and they need to repair. Horses are the same way. So as those muscle fibers are repairing, they might feel sore, they might look stiff. And I always tell people no riding the day after massage. And do not be alarmed if they come out of their stall and they look a little stiff or he might be off a little bit. That's totally normal, especially for a horse that's not very fit or if they're not used to massage or if the horse allowed me to use, you know, medium and hard pressure. You know, I'm just getting deeper into that muscle tissue and I'm breaking everything down a little bit more. So, you know, their level of soreness the next day might be a little bit elevated. And the, the day after, so two days after the massage, I say it's good to do a light ride. No jumping if it's a jumping horse, no reining maneuvers, no, no crazy patterns or anything. And do a good, long, slow warm-up to get the blood flow and get those muscles stretched out properly. And then a small work, like a small training session. And then the third day after massage, you know, keep in mind that the muscles might still be repairing. So do a good, long warm-up. And then, you know, if your horse feels good, do a normal training session with them. And during massage, you know, we're working those, um, we're working the muscle fibers, we're working the fascia, the tissue. So a lot of toxins are getting released into the horse's system. Typically, if we can, we put the horse in a stall with fresh water and they'll tend to drink a lot of water. And that's just their body telling them to take in water to flush their system, to remove all those toxins that we've worked up, to flush that out of their system. 
And the horses, you know, like he's got his head down, he's got his eyes closed. They'll do that. They will yawn. They'll lick and chew. You know, the yawning is just, you know, showing a big release. He's feeling good. We're getting those toxins out of the muscle and we'll get those flush out of his system. So the short of it is any horse can benefit from massage. It's going to feel good to them. If there's a problem, we'll find it. A lot of people don't even know that their horse might have, you know, a problem area somewhere or a stiff muscle somewhere. So he's almost halfway done. We'll hop on the other side and finish his massage out. I wanted to show this because another horse that we have here does the same thing. So when you put them on the cross ties, sometimes that they'll learn that they can lay on the cross tie and it just holds their head up so they can fully relax and, you know, get the most out of their massage. So obviously he's laying on this, on his halter right now. He is a little stiff on this side. Um, well, he's a lot more stiff on this side than on his left side but again it's one of those like it hurts so good type of things you know his eyes are closed his ears are up he's not wrinkling his nose or anything he's just doing this so he can get a little bit deeper in the muscle and he's you know laying really hard on his halter right now and it's just so he can put all his weight there and he can relax some of these muscles and he can really enjoy his massage. And that's the cool part about, you know, he's had massage a couple of times, so he understands the buckskin horse Vegas, he gets massaged a lot and he does the same thing, but typically he'll lay, like he won't lay to one side or the other like he's doing. He'll just lay straight on the tie and really take all that pressure off of his pole. Then I think that's pretty cool. So a lot of horses, you know, they'll kind of figure out how to move around during the massage and get the most out of it. And that's another reason I like using the cross ties because it does give them something to lay on if they learn how to do that. If he was uncomfortable, and there are some horses that will be uncomfortable during their massage. You know, a muscle just might be too sore to do a whole lot to. So we'll use light pressure or, or we'll just focus on bringing blood flow to that muscle for that session. But if the horse is in pain, you know, you'll have swish and tail. They'll pin their ears back. They'll wrinkle their nose. They won't take deep breaths. <laughs> they'll stomp. They'll... They'll just look very agitated. They'll dance around wherever they're tied up. You know, they'll um, throw their head up and down. So obviously, he's not doing any of that. So that's not a pain response. It's just him really enjoying his massage. And he's got the breeze blowing on him. The sun's just peeking in. He's got the whole deal going on right now. <laughs> mm. So nothing on him felt bad. You know, I said earlier he'd had a bit of a fall. 
Um, he's tight in his upper third of his neck. His shoulders feel good on both sides. His back wasn't too sore. And his hind end wasn't too sore. So that's really good all considering, you know, he had a slip and a fall. Hey, bud. It's like the first time he's opened his eyes this whole time. What are you doing? Huh? You enjoying this? Yes. <laughs> so we're halfway done. We'll finish him and make sure that he has access to plenty of fresh water. So he'll probably be thirsty and he'll want to flush all these toxins out of his body. And then maybe we'll get him a massage maybe in three more weeks and just see how that whole one neck is doing, how that's feeling. A lot of people too, you know, a good point to make. A lot of people will hold tension in their bodies because of stress or because of how they're built. Horses will do the same. You know, if a horse has a flaw in their conformation and maybe you know, a leg is crooked or, you know, one knee is higher than the other or one shoulder, you know, so anything could, you know, be a little bit wrong with the horse's conformation. That's going to throw off their whole muscular system. And, you know, you'll see, you know, maybe one side of the muscle, like a left, like the left side could be a little overdeveloped or underdeveloped, or they could be using their muscles a little bit differently because of the conformation flaw. So massage is good for um, horses in that aspect. And some horses will just naturally hold tension in certain areas like people. People that, you know, get stressed out, you might hold tension in your shoulders or your neck or a lot of people just from day to day activities will have lower back pain. Horses will do the same. It doesn't necessarily have to be a performance horse or a riding horse for them to have tension somewhere or tight muscles. So it's just another point that I want to make. You know, your horse doesn't have to show signs of soreness for you to call and make an appointment to get them massaged. So I'll show you another cool thing. He just started doing this um, back here, like towards his glute. Uh, sometimes if there's a big muscle and there's, you know, tension there or if it feels good, they'll kind of push into you a little bit. And it's just kind of their way of saying that feels good. You can go a little bit harder or you can, you know, work that muscle a little bit deeper. So you can see he's licking and chewing, so he's enjoying this. So he's pushing into my hand quite a bit. And if I dig in and let go, like you can see him kind of rocking. And that's him putting a lot of weight on my fingertips while I'm working this muscle. So he is a little tight here, but obviously this isn't painful to him. If it was painful, he'd be trying to move away from the pressure and not pushing into it. Oh, that's funny. I hope you can pick that up on the camera because he's leaning pretty hard into this. But a lot of times when you hit an area like this, if you stop for a second, you'll see that the horse will like that, take a deep breath or he'll lick, they'll lick and chew like what he just did a second ago. And so that's just reassurance that you know, you're getting a release out of that muscle. You're doing something right. So he's pretty tight back here. I don't know if this is the side that he fell on or what, but the other side, his left side wasn't as bad. So we'll just keep recording for a second and see what he does. You don't want to overwork the muscle either because that can make them really sore and we don't want to make them really sore. You know, some of it you can't really help. 
because you have to break the muscle fibers down and they have to rebuild, but you don't want to overwork. So that's just part of watching the horse and watching what they're telling you with their body language. <laughs>